Welcome to the show, Megan. So nice to have you here. Oh, it's nice to have you <laughs> be here. Thanks, Helen. <laughs> cool. So you and I didn't know each other until um, a few months ago, actually, and you uh, are very much admired by uh, my primalistas and a lot of potential primalistas as well as being a real guru in the food industry. And I was like, who's this Megan Ellen that everyone is talking about? I need to find more about it. And so literally I now stalk you on, uh, on social media. Oh, and by the way, if you can hear that drilling in the background, I'm having, finally having my kitchen renovations done. So if you want to see the before and after pictures, they will be up by now on my social media. So check it out. So yeah, if you do hear anything in the background, don't worry. I'm in my bedroom doing this interview <laughs> so so we'll just we're going with the flow right so those of you who are watching the video like we'll see what what I'm on about um so I yes yeah, so I've been stalking you on social media I'm so impressed with your personal transformation and how you've created a business out of doing what you love and inspiring other people and we're going to find out all about that today but before we dive into all of that tell us what you've had for breakfast today <laughs> um, well, I'm keto, so I don't actually eat breakfast. <laughs> so the only thing I've actually eaten a bit of today is a beautiful piece of um, pork butt or the shoulder of the pork that I actually smoked in my brand new Kamado Joe smoker yesterday. So it was really nice. But yeah, I didn't eat till, I don't know, probably around about one, two o'clock. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. That, that's so, so is that, is that the norm? Is that so most people who are keto wouldn't have a breakfast? Can you still have like a high fat breakfast um, and still yeah. be keto? Yeah. A lot of people um, will still eat more than, you know, one to two meals a day, or they might choose to eat breakfast as one of their main meals of the day. Um, but yeah, I go from, you know, like try and do at least a 16 hour fast every day so I'll yeah for instance you might go from 7 to 11 so you finish eating at 7 o'clock at night and you don't eat your first meal until about 11 o'clock the following day um, sometimes it's longer sometimes it's shorter you just eat when you're hungry awesome it it makes it easy yeah well it does and even though like it's um it's it, you know your breakfast it's still breakfast it's still breaking the fast even if it's a you know right. 11 o'clock one o'clock so it doesn't necessarily have to be um, wheat bix obviously it's not going to be wheat bix but you know what I mean. Like so, but I know it, <laughs> like a typical breakfast, you know. But it has. I have to make wheat. Hmm. Oh no, god, <laughs> that would be a mad creation. Absolutely, like oh my god. Mm. Like, actually, quirky cooking have got it's not keto. Um, have got um, uh, apple and cinnamon porridge that like when I make it and look at it, I think that just looks like wheat bix like you could totally it's like it looks like beige food i mean it tastes so much more better than the cardboard of wheat bix but yeah like check that one out in terms of um how it looks because that does seriously look like that mm. but i know this hasn't this keto lifestyle it hasn't always been part of your life so can you take us back to like how life was pre-keto and what your health was like back then yeah um well i mean from a young age, I was always thin. I could eat anything that I wanted, <laughs> not put on in any weight. As I kept getting older, I started slowly putting on weight. And then around the age of 30, um, I put on a lot and it kept growing each year, even though I tried various forms of trying to lose weight. So I still ate like the food, old food pyramid of lots of grains, all those super grains and super foods. <laughs> and fruit and veg or maybe not so much veg <laughs> let's be honest um fair bit of fruit though and you know moderate amounts of meat and low fat dairy because uh, i actually did um, study nutrition in my i think in my late 20s and um yeah so i always thought low fat dairy was always a good thing as well and yeah i just could not lose any weight and um by the time i was 45 i hit 110 kilos so i had put on a considerable amount of weight and no matter what i did i could not lose that weight um it was only through a sports injury through working with a personal trainer that i ended up at a sports specialist um with a achilles tendonitis bursitis and a big heel spur <laughs> i could barely walk 
and he suggested that maybe I uh, should get tested for insulin resistance. Um, that I, you know, uh, maybe putting on the weight because I just had too much insulin in the body and to change my diet. And I did. <laughs> I lost wow. an incredible amount of weight. <laughs> and what a transformation. And before you tell us more about the transformation, tell us a little bit about insulin resistance. Like, what is it? What are the signs that you've got it? And like, and also, I just want to say, like, thanks for sharing this story so far because, like, I think we've all been there on that low fat, you know, low fat yogurt, low fat milk. Um, yeah. <laughs> your diet, we've all been there because that's what we thought we had to do to be healthy. And even though, you did everything you could, like it's not your fault that you were gaining the weight, it's because you'd got flawed advice around what was what was the right thing to have. So like mm. for anybody listening who's struggling with their weight or wondering what they're doing wrong, like just know that you know you're not on your own. Megan's been down this road too, and hopefully gonna give you some actionable tips in this interview what that you can take away for your own life. So talk to us about insulin resistance. Like what is it? How did you know you had it? How do you test for it? That kind of thing. Okay, so insulin resistance is basically where your body can't process the carbohydrates. So, um, so eating lots of the grains and things like that, instead of the liver being able to process them, you were actually, it was turning to sugars and then being converted to fat on the body. So I wasn't able to process it correctly or you're not able to process it correctly. Um, I guess ways to tell that you've actually got it without getting tested first is a lot of people that have insulin resistance. Well, one, you can't lose weight <laughs> if you're trying to eat it the old fashioned way of eating, you know, um, the old food pyramid and eating your grains. Um, and you're probably more than likely going to be heavier around the middle. Um, so you'll have a larger waist circumference. And um, so to find out about, whether you are or not, you can go to the doctors, you get a blood test. You actually have to ask for them to test for the insulin resistance because if they're just going to do a general blood test, they don't actually test that part. So you do have to do a fasting blood test. Um, the measure of um, insulin in the body, I think it's uh, micro units per litre, is um, the, the number that you're supposed to be under is debatable, but it's between about five and eight. Um, that you should be below uh, to not have any signs of insulin resistance. Um, over 14 is high. Uh, myself personally, I had a reading of 59. Um, so I was very, very highly insulin resistant. Um, so hence why I had grown to the size I was. Um, and then to reverse it, it um, well, I was told that I could go on metformin, which is a, a diabetic drug. Um, and also saying that your blood glucose can be perfectly fine. Mine is fine as well as um, that. But having that sort of reading, the chances of becoming a you know, pre-diabetic diabetic is huge. Because <laughs> if you're over that 14, it's about five. Or I think it's like something if you're around about eight, you're five times more than somebody if they're under five. So at 59, God only knows what I was. <laughs> Um, but I said I didn't want to try the drugs and wanted to manage it with the diet because the first specialist I'd spoken to um, had asked me if I'd heard about the low carbohydrate ketogenic diet. And I'd already been doing recipes because I was blogging um, earlier and I'd done a couple of recipes for another low carb bloggers site and knew a little bit about it. Although to me, it made no sense that eating fat would make me skinny. <laughs> so it went against everything that I'd ever learned or we'd ever heard before as a general public um, that yeah, eating a, a high fat diet would help you lose weight but um, after years of not being able to lose any and, and gaining a lot of weight in the first week I lost over three and a half kilos just by changing to eating bacon and eggs and mayonnaise and full fat dairy <laughs> so yeah so if you feel that you are insulin resistant and can't lose that weight go and see your doctor get the tests done <laughs> and make those changes because even in a, in a week or so you can make incredible changes. A friend of mine only just started last week, even though she's followed my journey from the get go. And she was like, no, no, no. She tried it. And she said she was doing it and I'm like not losing any weight. I'm like, you're not being serious and you're not doing it properly. Well, she did it properly this last week. Um, in her first week, she actually lost four and 4.6 kilos and she's only about five foot tall. So that's an incredible amount of weight. 
um, for somebody who's nowhere near what I was <laughs> in being overweight. So, yeah, it definitely is, you know, something that can make a big change for anyone that has um, insulin resistance tested or not. Yeah, yeah, and it's definitely worth getting um, checked out for it. I've never, I think I do have some level of insulin resistance, um, mm. but I don't, like, I didn't know you could actually get tested. Like, I've had my blood glucose and stuff tested at the doctors. Like, they, they're quite happy to test that. But I didn't know you could actually get tested for insulin resistance, so that's a good one. Um, mm. I'm going to get that. I'm going to look into that. Um, so tell us about how, like, how your diet has changed from what you ate before when you, you said you love that dairy and your grains, your moderate amount of, protein and not so many veggies but um definitely lots of fruit um as long as it's you know getting in england it's five a day it doesn't matter if it's five bananas like five something yeah. fruit today i know it's two two and five here but um how has your diet changed like talk us through a normal day of what you would eat i always find this fascinating okay so pre-keto i ate a lot of grains so i would um if you consider the mexican kind of food style i ate a lot of um homemade fresh masa tortillas um i made all my bagel sourdoughs but they were grain free like you know um spelt sourdough english muffins and things like that you know i did crazy developments using um unrefined sugars and you know ancient grains and my main um fruit and vegetables I grow all my own fruit still to this day so I'd eat a lot of apples and bananas or not so much bananas but I yeah you know actually I did eat a lot of bananas mangoes you know cherries pears I grow all of those in my backyard um and my vegetables were mainly lettuce which is still great um cucumbers avocados tomatoes um, a lot of that sort of thing because I was mainly salsas and that's what I was always eating uh, I used to snack on, you know, nuts and nut bars and a bit of fruit while I was driving because I was not working for myself back in those days and on the road a lot. So I'd eat things that I could eat with one hand. And um, my main lunches would have been like a wrap, like um, like a chicken and avocado salad wrap. And we didn't eat a lot of takeaway, but yeah, we'd have like the occasional pizzas and things like that, but mainly a Mexican slash Indian with homemade naan and everything like that. Cause again, I was still blogging. So I was like creating all these lovely recipes. And if you looked on my old sites, they were all, you know, this bread based <laughs> kind of food where, you know, my partner who is what you'd say insulin sensitive, which means you can process insulin fine, was always lean and fine eating the same foods, but it put on the weight for me. Um, now, um, even if I wasn't, if I was on the road all the time, I could have one handed foods, but I wouldn't even probably need it. When you change to a, a high fat diet, um, you know, I get back, guess the best way of thinking about it is if you went out for breakfast and you sat down to a big plate of bacon and eggs and sausages and avocado and hollandaise sauce, say for instance, even if you threw in the toast, um, you probably would skip lunch, right? You know, because most people, when they've had a huge breakfast like that, they're like, oh my God, I'm still so full. I don't need lunch. And then you might not even have dinner or you might not even have something small for dinner because you've eaten this amount of fat. So by changing my diet with the ketogenic diet, it basically went from eating three meals a day and snacks to eating one meal a day, sometimes not eating in a day. Sometimes it might be two meals in a day. It just depends. It depends on the amount of fat that I've got in there. But um, it also... I had a lot of fat on my body. So uh, in the ketogenic diet, if you're not eating and you're fasting, your body is actually using the fat on your body for fuel. So it gives you so much more energy and the fat in the food does that as well too. So if you think of it as the big log that you throw on the fire, that it's going to be a, a longer burn and give you more energy and it's better fuel than the kindling carbs that you throw on the fire and they just fizz up and, you know, think about it. You know, we've all probably made the comment, you know, I had Chinese for lunch and I'm like hungry an hour later. And it's because you're eating those carbohydrates where if you sat down to lunch and ate a big slab of pork belly <laughs> and a bit of avocado and a bit of salad, uh, you're probably not going to be hungry an hour later or four hours later or five hours later. You might be hungry eight hours later. Or you might just go without, you know, till the following day. But yeah, um, by practicing the 
the intermittent fasting as what we call between the meals and that as well too that actually really helps for people who are high insulin resistance to bring that insulin down very quickly awesome yeah, sort of powering right now yeah so awesome tips so is is uh, there is there a certain thing as too much fat on keto yeah definitely um I, i'm i mean everyone has their own thing it, mainly you should be concentrating on hitting the pro like a protein allowance a day um but i don't go on any kind of uh, i have to have a certain amount of fat or, or i certainly wouldn't go over like um if you've got a lot of fat on your body there's no need to add those additional fats if you're a lean person who's um, following keto then of course you can add um you know cooking your bacon add the coconut oil or the butter and that as well and pour it all over the top it won't do you any harm that's for sure um but yeah if you're trying to lose the weight it's better to sort of keep it at a moderate level you know the fat that's for sure yep yep awesome so is 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 keto is is keto good for everybody um and and also i'd like to know like when you first started was it hard like to go from essentially being a sugar burner it's almost so, so unfair isn't it megan because like you <laughs> ate so healthfully like it's not like you could, you've come from a Macca's morning, noon and night kind of lifestyle. Like you were making all this beautiful, like you said, sourdough muffins, like from scratch and blogging, like you've already had a passion for food. And essentially what you were eating before was like really healthy, but conventional food, like, you know, like mm. the high, still high carbs and stuff like that. But was it hard for you to transition? Cause it sounds like it's been really easy. Was it hard to go from all of those carbs to then just ditch in the fat? Was there like a transition period? And and how was that? Um, it wasn't. I think it's mainly because I'd been to the doctors and knew what they were telling me. Um, even before, like I said, actually, I didn't say it, but as soon as I left the, the sports specialist office, I changed my diet immediately. He told me to buy um, a book called The Big Fat Surprise, and I ordered that, and another book, The Real Mill Revolution. And I was also got them online, so I was reading them before they even <laughs> arrived. I changed my diet immediately because I researched researched the insulin resistance, and it was basically telling me that you know I could have strokes, heart attacks. Um, so it was sort of the scare that I needed, especially at the level um, of insulin that was in my body. Um, and I also had a fatty liver as well. Um, so yeah, I really had to make the changes. So no, it wasn't hard. Um, and I guess because I come from a cooking background, I chose to create the foods that I would miss out on to keep on the diet. So that um, it's funny because in this industry, I see so many people going, I'll buy foods or whatever. I'm like, oh man, like if you're even making your pizza out of fat head or out of meat, it's still a faux food. You know, like, I mean, if you want to eat steak and veggies every day of the week, then most people aren't going to probably stay on that kind of diet long term because they're going to be bored out of their pants. Like anyone that ever tried a healthy diet, you know, pre-keto, if you're pre-keto or you're now trying to try somebody who's like, I won't say any brands because then I'm not getting in trouble. But let's just say you're following somebody's program who's a nutritionist and they're just saying, you know, eat chicken and vegetables, eat meat and salad or whatever every day of the week and eat your cereal on that for breakfast and eat a salad for lunch with a tin of tuna. After a week or two, you're bored. You want to eat that donut. You want to eat KFC or whatever. So basically I created what I wanted to eat and what other people I felt or what I polled people that they would like to see in a keto um, conversion and started to create all those recipes in that way. Now, every single day I get people saying, thank you for helping me stay on keto. So to everyone that says, faux foods are bad, I say, uh, nay, they're not, because there's no wagon falling off in my kind of diet. You stay on the wagon, you can still have your sweets, but you're just making ones that are actually low carb, sugar-free and compliant, and that can fit into um, a ketogenic lifestyle, which basically majority of us stay under 20 grams of carbs a day, which is there is 20 grams of carbs in an apple or a banana. There is 17 grams of carbs in one tablespoon of honey. So um, if I can give you a sugar-free Mars bar and you can eat a pizza 
and eat a burger all in one day for the same amount as one tablespoon of honey, which would you prefer? <laughs> well, I certainly know what I prefer. And I, like, I love how aligned our values are around this one because like, I just know, like, that's why I created my range of food because exactly the same reason, because my clients were telling me, um, it's all very well, you know, having, you know, meat and veg, like you're saying, chicken and salad and tin of tuna and mm. have a hard boiled egg for a snack. Oh, how exciting. <laughs> you know, like, and you might be able to do that like Monday to Thursday. And then by Friday, you're just like, oh, what the hell? Pass me the takeaway menu. I'm going to finish off that bottle of wine and eat a liter of ice cream because this has been so much deprivation. And like, I think that's the thing. Like, you know, humans, we just don't do deprivation. So if you can show me an eating, an eating plan like this that's going to improve my health, going to reduce my inflammation, going to you know, reduce all of my um, risk factors for, for heart disease and the like, like you were just talking about before. Mm. Um, and I can still have a Mars bar and a pizza and a burger. Like, why wouldn't you? And do you know what I find, Megan? The people who diss the, the full food, right, are usually the ones that are putting up some kind of blocks or barriers around why they don't want to go onto this way of life. You know, like, you know what I mean? Like they, they nitpick, yeah. nitpick it and say, oh, well, they're just making false, you know, like people said to me, like when I told my dad about my bread recipes, which, are, you know, we make the same kind of bread recipes. They're not bread. They're not bread. My dad was like, well, where's yeah. the flour? Where's the yeast? Like this isn't bread. I'm like, no, it's not. It's, it's, it's vegetables and nuts and eggs pretending to be bread. Yeah. But my, you know, my, um, my sacred desire for my daily bread, which I've had as a staple all my life is satisfied. You know, like I've just, before I had a chat to you, just, popped had some toast because that's all I've had time for today well you know what would I have done if I didn't have like what would I've done if I didn't have time to make that what just you know what I mean it just makes life so much more enjoyable and fun you know like I've just high fives on that one sister for that like <laughs> totally totally awesome like I love it I love it like so be gone for food haters like <laughs> Bring on the four yeah. food. That's what I say. Definitely, definitely. So tell us about how your health, like obviously you lost a stack of weight. You look yep. incredible. What else happened health-wise for you when you transitioned to keto? Okay. Well, before I got on this, I actually wrote some things down because it's really hard to remember. And I actually just did a, um, an author thing on Thursday and um, they asked me and I couldn't remember half the stuff because it's such a long list. So get ready because it's a lot. So before I probably had a bit of sleep at me, I never slept and I snored. That's gone. Um, I had carpal tunnel. All symptoms gone. Gas. Gone. Um, my hair has grown heaps. It's really shiny and long. Nails grow. Skin is amazing. Um, I had psoriasis and dermatitis. Both of them are gone now too. Uh, it's probably hard to see on here, but you can see like I've got heavily scarred arms, all of that's gone. The tendonitis and the bursitis is all gone. Um, I have 20 stairs in my house to go from upstairs to downstairs. Um, I used to be able to click, hear my knees clicking from one end of the house <laughs> every time I went up there, that's gone. Um, constant hunger, definitely gone. Um, even think it's funny saying this is a food blogger who thinks about food most of the day to create recipes. I'm not thinking about what I'm going to eat or what I want for dinner until it's actually time that I'm actually hungry. And I'm like, oh, what is there to eat? Because I'm not obsessed with food, which is what I think the carbohydrates before was telling me all the time. You're hungry. What do you want to eat? Oh, you want more of us. It's like these little gremlins in your head. Um, brain fog and function. Um, I've always been a fast talker and a fast thinker, but now it's crazy where my brain goes all the time. Um, again, no cravings energy levels through the roof. Um, I get up around about 6.30 every morning. I don't go to sleep probably about till one o'clock. So I'm pretty much always on the go and I haven't been sick in the 19 months, I think it is now that I've been keto. So not one cold, not one flu, no migraines. I used to suffer from migraines and tension headaches. I get none of those anymore. Um, I don't have any of those lows anymore. Um, I wouldn't say I had depression, but I did have um, times where I had to block people out and just chill in a dark room kind of thing. Um, one of the big things is I had tested for really bad cupping in the eye, um, uh, early onset glaucoma. That 
because now there's no signs of any pressures in my eyes at all, um, where it was at the point that, you know, it, um, it could cause blindness. Um, and yeah, just a lot happier. Um, and that has transferred to a lot of people around me that I know, um, say that nearly everybody I know, including now my mom, who's only just gone keto in the last week, uh, everybody's going that because they're not only seeing the physical changes, but they've seen the mental changes and how happy and healthy and positive I am now um, every single day that they all want a bit of that too. It's like a drug, I guess. <laughs> and yeah, so yeah, I think that's a pretty big list. It's a huge list. Like I'm just like gobsmacked <laughs> at all those things that you've said. And like, so, you know, you've, you've reversed autoimmune diseases. You know, like yeah, and like fatty liver and insulin resistance, you know, so, um, uh, you know, even my triglycerides, everything came right down. So, yeah, so good on the inside and the outside. Good on the inside and the outside. Yeah. And, you know, you've reduced your inflammation, your look at me. How many, how many kilos have you lost altogether? Uh, 32. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Just amazing. Just so amazing. So amazing. So, so tell us about how you then transformed like, so you transformed your life, your health's amazing. And then you decided to then kind of like do a U-turn with your food blogging to make it mm. more keto based and how like you're just a, like a, like if you've only been doing this for like 18 months, like literally an overnight success in terms of, did you have the, like those followers, those old millions of followers that you forgot? Like, did you, I told me, is it, is it millions? Like how many, like how many people no, follow you now? Um, well, I have on my on my website. I have about fifty thousand um, per month users. So, and yeah, I have a lot of. Uh, well, I have seventeen k on Facebook, um, and you know, quite a few subscribers and that to my newsletters, etc. Because they get a lot of freebies and offers, things like that. But um, I, like I said, I'd had a few other blogs beforehand. Uh, the biggest one, which was very carb based, it was um, Spanish Mexican. Um, southern style food that sexy thermo <laughs> what's its name <laughs> I come up with the craziest names um, I did have about 5,000 followers on that uh, before I started low carb mixes which was what turned into mad creations and um, I started low carb mixes in April 2017 uh, within a couple of days we had a few thousand followers uh, and because I was already creating my own recipes immediately, I knew I was going to do a book um, from the get-go because I've been blogging for so long and it's what I've always wanted to do. Um, but, yeah, I just needed to have the right groove and I was going to do one with my previous blog that was going to be Mexican, but two other Aussie bloggers brought out two Mexican cookbooks at the same time as what I was thinking about doing one. So I went, blow that, <laughs> I'll do that, I'll put that on the shelf. And then, of course, when I started Low Carb Mixes, I'm like, okay, well, I'll just do Keto One. Um, I had enough material for a good size book, but uh, the people that were helping me out and testing, because I had a team of, I think I had about 15 testers then, um, they're like, oh, no, no one will buy a book for, you know, $50, $60. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I've got all these books. And they're like, can you hold off on one? I'm like, they're seasonal. So instead of launching one, I decided to launch two at the same time. So I basically went from April to August in 2017. So yeah, it was pretty quick that I'm like, okay, I'm going to do these two books. And I did a dual launch um, on the 11th of, the 11th of August, um, 2017 and launched those two. And then subsequently in 2017, launched another four eBooks and another hard copy before the year was out. So yeah, I was a little bit crazy. And to date, yeah, there's now 15 titles under me. Oh, by the way, I actually did launch a book before I launched any of the other ones for Fat Sexy Seven. I actually forgot all about that. It was called Sexy and Seven. <laughs> it was actually a clean eating 21-day meal plan, um, which I launched in, I think it was the end of 2016. So, yeah, <laughs> that like was my just first mini book. Like, wow, like I know what goes behind a launch. Like I've not done a cookbook, but I know what goes behind a launch. And like launch is a full on it. But then you're coming up with all the content yourself and you're on all of your Facebook groups. Like how do you do it? Do you have a team of people supporting you or is it literally you doing everything? 
Okay, so I do have a team now of 30 testers for all the Mad Creations books and um, for January 2019, I'm putting out two new magazines. One will be just a Thermix conventional basic looking one that'll be uh, featuring all bloggers and that as well. So I'll have a team for that um, and all bloggers all around the globe are contributing towards it. So I will actually basically just be like the publisher and editor shuffling it all around. Um, then I'm doing another one for Keto as well, Keto Life magazine. So that will be also in the new year as well. That'll have another lot of testers. But yeah, at the moment I do all of the recipe development, all of the initial testing, all of the photography. Um, I do employ a designer to put my books together. Um, not the digital ones because I sell them at a, at a lower price point um, and just want something that, you know, people can actually easily access and have in the iBooks that they can use and, and not have to go searching all over the place for um, recipes. Um, but yeah, the, I, and I have somebody who's doing the editing and that as well. So, because I write as I think. And some of the things I write is crazy. <laughs> you might have a little laugh if you're reading some of my recipes, but they're meganisms. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like it. And that's part of your brand, you know, like it's like mad creations. Like this is a little bit crazy, uh, but I love that. It's not like this, this filtered, you know, like trying to be all professional because mm, that's just so boring. Like people want that refreshing and like you have just got such a unique, really refreshing different take on it. And like obviously just such a good eye for design, like the way that you do your photos and everything. It's just amazing. Like, I don't know. This is, this is what you were meant to do. Like, absolutely. So tell, what was your, what was your previous proper job that you had before you were able to quit okay. it? Well, um, my previous proper job, I was in like business development. So basically like a sales rep, um, which I'd worked in many different um, sales and business roles for many years, but, um, my first career for 13 years was cooking professionally in restaurants and cafes and hotels across Newcastle. And yeah, then I went into sales and marketing. So I guess I put the cooking, the sales and the marketing <laughs> all together. I, I had to learn the photography. Uh, that's a lot of fun too. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it all ended up in there together anyway. Um, and yeah, I've been, I was cooking for my family from a very, very young age. So it's always been an interest of mine and, and writing always was as well. Um, but yeah, to write a story or something like that, some fiction or nonfiction, yeah, not really, I'm not really that good. <laughs> you're telling your story, you're telling your story with food and you're getting your, yeah, you're, you're getting your story across in the creations, which is yeah. like, and to me, it's like all of your cool stuff food. all together. It's like everything that you've loved ever since, you know, you were a young mm -hmm. girl and now you can put it into a business and like, this is your best contribution yet. Like, so absolute yeah. kudos That's to crazy. you. It's so cool. It's so cool. <laughs> so I know a lot of my listeners are really, um, they also have a passion for real food like you and I do. And, you know, they, they um, are against the grains and um, really into this new way, like if you like new old way of eating yeah, and, yeah. and would love to make a business out of it, you know, like either become a food producer or to write a cookbook. Have you got any advice mm. for anybody who um, is feeling that passion, like they want to contribute, they want to help others? Have you got any uh, tips for them of how to get started? Um, I would say for myself, the best thing I ever did was not producing something immediately, even though I did with keto when I started it, um, I'd had a long following. So it wasn't like people didn't know who I was like, you know, I could reach out to them and say, if you're interested in seeing low, low carb, and then, you know, people would see, you know, me going from one size to another, that's quite inspiring to a lot of people. Cause, um, let's be honest. I'm not the only person out there and there's not just a few of me that are getting around that can't lose weight or, you know, you know, feel, feel that they me you know, would be happier by losing a few kilos. So um, I think it's just more about taking your time, invest, you know, building up the people around you and the support network and everything like that as well to working out exactly what you want to do, because sometimes it's better to, you know, do a little bit of work before actually putting it out there and actually saying, okay, I'm going to do this. Cause even now when I look back at 
what I've originally done, I go, oh God, it needs a lot of work because it was like, <laughs> you know, if I'd waited a while even longer, it would have been even better. Um, but yeah, I think to successfully launch a business, you want to have a bit of a following, especially now if you're going to do it something like myself or yourself where you're going to use that social media, if you're building your following and giving them something um, for value now, then down the line, that will come back for you in spades. Um, you know, like I think as a blogger, um, from what I know, I think I put more free content out there than most. Um, so that I always had that balance so that, you know, people will be more inclined to want to buy from me because I give so much and it, that's not a marketing thing. That's just how I am. Um, I am somebody that will always give, uh, my product, my work, my time to somebody if they need it or they want it. And yeah, I just think, yeah, to be successful in business, you got to do that and market yourself and you know, do a lot of courses and things like that really help if you start doing all that things. Like I'm still learning stuff now. I mean, I've only just joined Tailwind today. <laughs> what's Tailwind? Do I need to know what, oh, what's Tailwind? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, um, it's where you can schedule all your pins and then on Pinterest. So mm. for online bloggers like myself, Pinterest is a massive um, tool to get the traffic in that. And I've really never done anything about it. So you can join tribes where you put your pins on. So then there people can see your pins and your stuff and then they might repin it and they visit your website. So then they're getting traffic and, you know, you've got paid content on there and that as well too. And then they go on there and they buy your books. Like I've got people that I've seen just come on and they're buying my books and they said, Oh, you know, cause I've got a thing on Facebook. How did you find it? They said, I just bought your books. So they've actually bought my books before they've even found me on social media but they've found it through some other link. So, um, yeah, it's through all of those different avenues that you you can start to build a following before bringing out a product. Um, and, of course, if you're going to go into producing or something like that, then you've got to know that that product's really good. So you want to get it out there and get the testers and get people raving about it to get the following and get people, you know, wanting to know more, you know, even... My last book, Keto Eats, I've had it going since about April, May. It had a different name, but I put out, you know, the whole plan of what was going to go in there and immediately, like, there was this rush of people. So I knew that that was going to be mm. a big opportunity. And if you're going to sell a product, the best thing you can do before even producing it is do pre-sales because then you know how many to order and you don't end up with, you know, depending on the cost of your products thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of stock that you're not going to move because nobody wants your product. Um, so, yeah, that, that, that's a massive thing if you're going to sell a product. Do it's a massive, it's a massive really, thing. Really help. It is. It's a, it really does help. And it, it, it makes sense. Like, it's, it's, really, it's really smart marketing, but it's also really cool to um, involve your tribe or your community in your launch and ask their opinion of what they want because mm. they're your ideal, they're your customers. So, like, it's so good to get their feedback so you know that you're putting together something that people are actually going to want but also uh, it builds that yeah. it builds that excitement up in terms of like oh my god how exciting to be one of the first to know about megan's new book i can't wait for it to come out let me let me and get they it. feel like they're a part of it yeah but also you put on something that's perfect and it's something that why i do like i do a lot of polls and and questions on my facebook all the time because what you think might sure. be great and sell right or is fabulous is not what everybody else thinks and it won't work if it doesn't appeal to your target market mm. so invest in looking at who your target market is get your target market market towards your target market and then you'll have a successful product or business yeah and asking them what they want it's not hard is it just like with good old facebook <laughs> like a little poll, you know, like I'm, all, I'm forever asking my prime listers, what do you think about this? Because there's no, like, I, I, there was a day when I just thought I had to make all the decisions and I had to, you know, just roll it out to them and it was all perfect and ready to launch, which is just ridiculous because, you know, at the end of the day, they are like a, a, like a sort of tester group of our target market because they are also our target market as, as I am and you are, like right. we all are target yeah. market. So if I can test it on them and see what they think and then they can, you know, flag up any issues. It's so much easier to do it in a smaller group of like 60 women as opposed to 
going out to 6,000 people, customers who are then going to go, well, this doesn't work. And I've tried that and it doesn't work. And, you know, so yeah. So listen to your customers and definitely ask their advice is some, is a great tip. Now, just a slight, yeah. a slight you bend, you bend, not you bend. That's not very good. I've got a plumber here. I'm just thinking, I'm thinking in terms of plumbing, but um, a segue is a nice way to say it. Let's talk about what Megan Ellen thinks about the three great areas in this kind of clean living lifestyle, which are wine, or let's just call it alcohol, because I know that you yep. wine, you just drink tequila these days, wine, chocolate, and coffee. Okay. So I'm going to go in reverse. Coffee is fine. Um, however, if you like your lattes or your cappuccinos, sorry to tell you, milk is full of carbs. So you've got to ditch the milk. Um, milk substitutes, there is coconut milk, um, all, of course, unsweetened almond milks. There is a new product um, through Coles. I can't remember the name of the brand that's put it out. Um, it's called Like Milk, which is actually a um, pea protein milk. I find that's probably one of the best ones to go into tea. Um, but yeah, if you're going to drink coffee while on keto and you're still having those milks, you still have to add up the carbs because there is a small percentage of carbs in them. Or alternatively, you can have cream. So that sounds really weird, but cream is a lot lower in carbohydrate than milk. Black coffee, drink as much as you like. I drink a lot. Um, <laughs> and I didn't drink it before going keto, which is really weird. Um, then we had chocolate. Chocolate, if you're going to eat chocolate, um, go on as your dairy milk. <laughs> That's full of sugar. Get your things like lint or any of the chocolates. I would prefer to say over 85%. Some people eat 70%, but the way to consider it is like if you go 70% cacao, 30% sugar, it's probably a good way of thinking about your chocolate because they still actually have sugars in them. So the higher percentage you can go, if you can go all the way up to 90%, eat that. Um, if you deprive yourself of all chocolate, and that sounds terrible saying deprive, but if, if you eliminate it from your diet just for a few weeks and then try one of those chocolates, you'll probably find that that sweetness from your palate has actually gone and you'll find that, that you'll actually enjoy it, even if you didn't enjoy it before, because I didn't eat it before either. But there is um, sugar-free chocolates that are low-carb on the market, even at Woolies in your gluten-free section. Uh, they're well naturally. They're the lowest-carb ones. Look out for your lint, no-sugar ones. They're still very high-carbohydrate. Um, they're really good. And they're in milk chocolates and there's like mint chip ones that taste like a peppermint crisp and that as well. However, they're so good, you're probably likely to overindulge. So only buy the small packets and hide the rest. Break, you know, break glass in need of <laughs> a piece of chocolate. And then we had alcohol. So alcohol and keto, again, alcohol, when you drink alcohol, the body has to actually break down that alcohol before it breaks down anything else. So it, whether whatever diet you're eating now, if you eat, you know, a low carb diet or you eat a high carb diet and you drink alcohol, your body is going to leave the food that's there and not work on it. Um, it's actually going to have to break down all of the alcohol first that you're consuming, burning it up before it'll actually touch that food. So in many instances, the calories or the fat from that food can end up on your body, end up on your bum, <laughs> in your belly and um, not give you the most positive results. Uh, uh, in keto alcohol still not it's not totally out it is yes a gray area um, there is a lot of zero carb spirits so a lot of you white um, white spirits and that are zero carb i if anyone follows me knows that i'm a little bit of a gin lala <laughs> i do have quite a collection um but it doesn't mean i drink gin every day of the week and uh wines red or white if they should be a, a dry wine because a sweet wine is obviously, if, you, if it tastes sweet, then it's going to be higher carbohydrate. Um, are okay as well as um, there is a, a zero carb beer for the, for the men out there and, and the girls that like to drink beer. I'm not a, a massive beer drinker, um, but Big Head have bought out a zero carb beer. Uh, even though there is low carb ones, they quickly add up because a lot of them, when you see something that's called low carb, it could be, could be just one carb less than what the other brands are. Um, you really need to check and see and again check how many you're going to consume so but yeah you know it, it can stall you in but you know it's it's not something that's totally out so if you want to change and in saying that I lost all of my weight still consuming alcohol right through it and no exercise so 
So yeah, yay for the keto diet. Um, you can eat your burgers, you can eat your pizzas, you can eat your donuts, you can drink your alcohol and still lose weight. That's why we call it a lifestyle, not a diet, because it's just making the change of taking out the carbohydrates and making it just a slightly different way. Yeah, you know, you just you make it sound so easy. Like seriously, like come to come to Megan's world with alcohol and coffee, lots of coffee, coffee and, and chocolate. <laughs> it's so interesting. Yeah, I know. Like I wouldn't like sitting there. I'm, I'm like we are very uh, like minded, as I said before. But you know, for me, this lifestyle would not be possible if I couldn't have those three things in it. Like I could do it for a period of time. You know, if I was doing a yeah. liver cleanse or whatever, and I have done, um, and I same as you have alcohol free days. I was talking to a naturopath the other day, Steph Lowe, and she said we should have CFDs, which are chocolate-free days. Which I said, that's a load of rubbish. We do not need that. <laughs> What's she on about? <laughs> crazy woman. Like, seriously. Crazy woman. It's getting quite intense now. The Renault's is actually coming through my wall now. Can you still hear me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but on, on, the, on the coffee thing, like I used to love my – what I used to have? skinny mockers with a teaspoon of sugar right there's no coffee in that like that is a sugar bomb and that's what i used to love and actually the the dairy was making me constipated which i've come through so i was just mm. an anxious toxic mess but like now i've moved on to a much much more this is real life guys we work it from home this is what really happens when you're a podcaster from home so that was like, you make it sound super easy, but if somebody was thinking, OMG, like they said they're eating a primal lifestyle now, which is already like relatively low, low carb, like under hundred grams of carbs a day. But if they wanted to try under 20 grams of carbs a day, what would be the first things you would say to them to get started? I would definitely like all of us mostly start with, um, it's always called a green list of foods. So it's like the lower carb foods that you can actually eat. And it has your fats on that on there as well too. I guess it's looking at where, if you, like you said, if you're on, um, sorry about that, if you're on 100 grams of carbs a day and you wanted to cut it out, look at where the majority of those carbohydrates are coming from. Um, if it if it's from fruit, then you know just only have a couple of berries a day if that's what you're going to have for a little bit of that uh, fruit hit. Uh, if it's bread, of course, you, you know even primal, you've got different breads in it that you can have that lower carbohydrate bread and limit it so it's more about your portion control but increase um your protein so it can be eating you know any kind of meat or seafood uh you know eggs cheese dairy and things like that um, and that will increase the fat but decrease the carbohydrate value so it, it, it's it's quite easy when you consider okay if you go oh you know i like my chocolate <laughs> my dairy milk but it's like i really like my brie cheese too so i could eat like a quarter of a brie over a piece of dairy milk chocolate oh it's not so bad now is it you know yeah, so yeah. It's no at, yeah it's it's looking at more what you can eat that's um lower carbohydrate and better for you than the carb filled foods that you would feel would be a great um cushion to change over because, you know, I mean, I, I deal with people that have some very strong addictions to chocolate and that, that are in part of my group and that as well. And, you know, it's like looking at alternative ways that maybe if we used an avalanche drinking chocolate and mix it into a cream and mix it up in the thermomix and made it into a, a mousse, that you could eat a whole cup or even more of mousse if you wanted to. That's not going to hurt your diet. Um, but it's going to satisfy that that craving of the higher carbohydrate, sugar filled food. So, yeah, I just think it's just more about substituting something that you can you'll thoroughly enjoy because it might even be that you've never eaten full fat dairy and all of a sudden you can eat thick and double thick cream out of the container if you want. <laughs> you know, so that's how I think of it. It's like, like yeah, I, I'm not eating my masa tortillas anymore, but you know, hey, I'm eating camembert and cheese platters you know, just with my own crackers, which are much better than one to buy. <laughs> they are. Like that, that's the other surprising thing that when you do actually add yeah. fat back in your diet, like everything tastes so much better. Like that's, that was a big revelation for me. You know, like I'd gone for years without any like olive oil on my, on my salads, without eating avocados or things like that. Or like having like a chicken drumstick with no skin on, like yeah. that's the, like the best, the, when Butter. it all goes crispy or oh, Butter. 
Or like, what I never about ate butter ever. No, me either. It was like margarine. I can't believe it's not butter is what I used to eat. A nut well, I don't even eat margarine, but nuts it's like... <laughs> well, now it's just like, yeah, you could have a slab of butter and you could put your Vegemite on the top of that if you really wanted to. <laughs> you don't yeah. even need bread. But yeah. yeah, like, you know, I use a lot of butter now. And like I say, it's certainly not doing me any harm because every day somebody tells me I'm looking amazing. <laughs> you do, you look amazing. And I loved it. Like I said to you, you look great. And you're like, thank you. You know, because you're so used to getting that positive feedback and it's nice to actually you know, I really appreciate that because you know how far you've come and, and all the changes that you've made. And now you're going on to inspire others, which is just incredible. And so grateful mm. to you for your contribution in this space, because I know you're really helping a lot of people out and helping make this lifestyle more doable for them, which is what, what it's all about. It's not just a quick fix. Like you say, it's not a diet. It's a lifestyle. It's a change that we need to make for the rest of, rest of our lives. So thank you for all that you do. Now, for our listeners who are like, oh my God, how do I get onto this Megan chick? I want to find out more about her. I've heard about her books and she's got groups. Like, where do we go to hang out with you and get more of you? Okay, so we'll start with a website. So the website is www.madcreationshub.com and you can subscribe there. You know, I've always got like, a free ebook and that that you get when you subscribe and we keep up to date with offers and things like that throughout the year we've got our facebook group which is facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash low carb mixes yes it's not my business name but it's my old one <laughs> um and you can buy the books on my shopify site where you'll find that at https then, uh, colon forward slash forward slash low carb mixes myshopify.com but yeah if you just head to the facebook group or um the website you'll find all my socials and that there and i'm always online <laughs> always <laughs> yes you are you are you're you're an online ninja you're incredible absolutely love it mm. love it absolutely love it so <laughs> what's next like what what's what's in the future like you've done so much in such a short space of time what's next in the pipeline Okay, well, um, right now in, uh, I'm launching uh, Keto Eats and I am actually contacting publishers and um, book houses and that as well to um, be in bookstores as an independent author at the moment, but hopefully get a publishing deal in 2019. And I will be self publishing the two magazines, the Just Cook magazine and the Keto Life magazine. Um, for 2019 featuring all different bloggers to showcase um, the great bloggers that are around us. I'm in plenty of groups with some great ones there. And I think that that would be a great platform where it's not one voice, but many, um, where you're not getting, you know, just a book from me that's got all my recipes in it. You're getting, you know, a monthly magazine, digital, and it's digital magazines, by the way, um, that you'll have access to all of these people that, that you may not have heard of before, but are fabulous. I mean, there's ones out there that are huge and I've never even heard of them. There's people I'm still to yet un uncover myself. So uh, that's one of my big plans. And of course, I'll, I'll um, put out another two books in the new year. I only did one this year, but uh, I'm planning one for the mid-year and one for the end of the year as well, because I'll, I'll be focusing on the magazine and doing a little less um, of the eBooks and that myself. So. But yeah, I'm always busy and always trying. And yeah, and also potentially bringing out some of my products into manufacturing and stuff like that as well. So yeah, I've always had plans, but now I'm just trying to focus on what it will be. <laughs> yeah, wow. I love that. You're just like, yeah, I've only done, sorry, I've only done one book this year. I'll be bringing out another two next year. It's just, it's incredible. It's incredible. Right, well, um, <laughs> All right. Well, I think we'll leave it there today, Megan. Thank you so much. No, uh, you're literally. No, thank you so I much think, for having me. I think the plumber's going to come through the walls. So I think we better we better wrap it up. Thank you so much for all that you do. And um, yeah, thanks for thanks for being here. It's so cool. Really grateful. Awesome. No, thanks for having me, Helen. <laughs>